The great outdoors seem to be home to more than just cryptic creatures, downright strange supernatural happenings, and the creepiest people. It seems no matter where we go in the United States, or the world for that matter, we keep running into the strangest things known to man. Welcome back to the swamp, and welcome if you're new, my friends. Today I'm going to be sharing some creepy and allegedly true stories from the great outdoors sent in by viewers just like you. As always, if you have a story that you would like to share in a future episode, be sure to submit your story at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. Hey swamp folk, are you looking for a stress-free summer? HelloFresh sends you foolproof, step-by-step -step recipes and fresh pre-portioned ingredients to make mealtime a summer breeze. Get 16 free meals plus 3 free gifts with code SWAMPED16 at hellofresh.com slash swamped16. Hi Swamp Dweller. I believe in all things supernatural and always listen to your YouTube channel. Although my stories do not contain any sightings of cryptids or strange creatures, it was bizarre. I live in South Carolina, and on a hot summer day, my best friend and younger brother decided to go to Pisgah National Forest in the Appalachian Mountains of North Carolina for a day of exploring. We were all teens with no criminal history or drinking or drug use. We were mostly planning on just driving gravel roads that veered off into the woods from Highway 176 that leads from the town of Brevard to the Blue Ridge Parkway. We had a fantastic day. We had a long hike, and we were in a great mood. Towards the evening, we found another gravel road named South Mills River Road, and we drove down it hoping to find a river at the end. The road soon led to a closed gate in a small clearing where a car was parked in the woods. It seemed like it had been parked there for quite a while. According to satellite imagery, the river was about a mile beyond the closed gate. So we parked the car, got all of our gear out, and started walking. Overall, the woods were very silent and somehow very unwelcoming. This was public hunting land. So, plenty of beer cans indicated the type of people that used this area. As far as I know, there were no open hunting seasons at the time, and we felt good about it and continued walking, trying to keep up the happy mood despite the gloomy and creepy atmosphere. We followed the road until it led to the South Fork Mills River, where the road ended. We came to a decent clearing called Wolf's Ford Roadside Camping, where a lone tent was up. On the edge of the clearing towards the river, there was a stone tower about 6 feet by 6 feet and about 15 feet tall with a metal staircase leading to a heavy metal door at the top of the building. The door was shut and covered in bullet marks where people had clearly shot at it. A heavy metal trap door was also welded at the tower's base. About 30 yards away, a geological marker was cemented into the ground. Although, to you, this might sound like a typical scene, for us it was downright creepy. The absence of people, the doors being welded shut, the lone tent, it all had a very dark vibe. What was that door hiding? Why was this tower built out in the middle of nowhere in the mountains? We fished for probably two hours and then all decided that we needed to leave as the feeling of being watched was overwhelming. I don't know if this was just some abandoned research station or an abandoned mill operation, but this was so far from civilization that I highly doubt it. The biggest thing was the overwhelming feeling of something not being right. I've heard stories on this channel of the oddly placed building leading to underground tunnels where some sort of experiments were definitely happening, so who knows. One thing is for sure, I'll be going back there for more information. I did all the research I could but could not come up with any information on any buildings or projects in that area. So if anyone has any idea what's going on at South Mills River Road at the South Forks Mills River near Wolf's Ford Roadside Camping Spot, please let me know. And Swamp Dweller, if you decide to share my story, I greatly appreciate it. Hello Swamp Dweller. For privacy reasons, I will go by L. For some context, I'm 10 years old and I live in Sydney, Australia. While the city is lively and reasonably safe, the bush is a different story. Apart from the fact that every animal here seems to want to kill you, 
the bush hides more sinister secrets. I remember that in one of his reports, Sam White Owl mentioned the crawlers. These humanoid creatures definitely live in Australia as well. Every year, people report seeing crawlers across Australia. But now, let's get to my actual story. A few months ago, my father and I decided to look for frogs at Flat Rock Gully. We had been to the gully before at day, but never in the nighttime. I was excited about it as it was my first ever frogging trip. We packed all the gear in the car and arrived. We only heard crickets at first, but then we heard something else. It sounded like a soft howl. My dad and I walked along with the sounds continuously coming and going. We went through a tunnel and made a joke about some creature living in there. We arrived at a large open area. It was a perfect habitat for the eastern dwarf tree frog. Then I saw something. It had a round owl-like face, large eyes, no mouth, and a long, lean body. It was on all fours, even so, I knew it was small. No taller than one meter or three feet tall. It looked almost young, appearing as if it was not yet fully grown. The creature just watched us from afar. I reckon my father never saw it. I refused to tell him out of fear of him not believing me. The creature then hid behind a bush entirely out of my view. We continued on our way, both feeling uneasy and the house carried on. We got to the end of the trail and went home. I told my father and he said he didn't see anything but heard the noises and felt uneasy as if we were being watched and followed. He said he believed me, but I don't know if he actually does or not. You might be thinking it was a wallaby or another native animal, but wallabies are extremely rare in bushland near the suburbs, and no other native animal moves like that. I don't know what it was, and I'm hoping a viewer can tell me. I'm sorry if this story was not as action-packed as others. I will try to revisit Flat Rock Gully when I get the courage, but my advice is do not visit Flat Rock Gully at night. And no matter where you are, if you hear the soft howls, get out. And remember, always check the bushes. You'll thank me. Hello, Swamp Dweller. My name is Jonathan. This story I'm about to tell you takes place on the reservation. I will not disclose the exact location if any other encounters occur, and someone would die instead of me living to tell the truth. It began when I got up at 6 a.m. to do basic tasks and chores. I set out for myself before heading to work like I always did. I will not give the tedious details of my day, but it was expected and I would come back home sometime around 7.45 p.m. I get out of the truck and not too much sooner, I get this feeling that I'm being watched. Now part of my land is on the reservation, it has these deep, thick woods on it. I often will jog through them to keep myself in shape. It's always great to stay in touch with nature as well. I looked around, but saw nothing. I went up the stairs to greet my tubby cat and my dog Quicksilver. He is a Doberman mixed with Great Dane, but his coat had patches of white that were curling and lining that made me think of X-Men, so that's why I gave him the name. He wasn't scared of much, he was always protective of me and always knew if something didn't have good intent. But for now, I will continue with what happened after I greeted my pets. So after I fed them, I took Quicksilver for a walk. As we got out, he dead stopped walking, sniffed the air, and growled. It was unlike him because he had never done this before. As much as I didn't like it and Silver didn't like it, you gotta go. But before that, I stopped by my truck opened the door, and got my custom Remington 1100 made for unique slugs, but I just loaded my regular buckshot because I didn't know what to expect. I and Silver headed away from the truck to start the walk. I look at the sky, seeing the sun setting. It is getting dark, and I just keep going, and thankfully Silver did his business, and I let him back into the house. I got back out, still holding my 1100, grabbed my shovel, and walked up to pick up Silver's, you know, mess. As I shovel it up and throw it away, Quicksilver howled so loud and barked in harsh tones. I looked behind me and of course, I saw this thing bolting at me with incredible speed. Since it was dark, all I saw were pure yellow eyes shining as they went up and down. I took one look in my sights and fired, and it didn't seem to do anything but piss it off. 
I bolt to the door and slam it shut. I lock all three locks and back up. Silver runs up in front of me, growling and then barking viciously. Suddenly, I hear three loud bangs up on my door. I go up to my room and Silver runs with me. I load a shell and hold one more in my pocket. After cocking the 1100, something busted right through my front door as it let out this gut-wrenching roar that shook the foundation of my home. It damaged everything in anger looking for me. It started banging, and then suddenly it stopped. I heard nothing, and then a massive bang and the whole door I was behind smashed into pieces. Now I was face to face with what my people would call Yi Nan Lushi, or a skinwalker. It smelled of rotten meat, death, and decay. Its face was that of a skull with other animals melded to the top of it. Nothing good comes from this creature. I pointed the barrel towards it, this unholy thing, and pulled the trigger. At first, they went through, but the skinwalker looked unfazed. It just stood there and looked at me with this look as if it was just annoyed. I load my last shot and pull again. Then, just like that, the skinwalker lit a blaze, screaming in pain. It charges at me as I dodge out of the way onto my bed, and it jumps clear out of the window, running toward the woods, but not before letting out another screech. This time, it was so loud it reached me and hurt my eardrums. As it resided back to the woods, it was running so fast you could still see a blink of light running through the forest before disappearing. Quicksilver was smart and hid under the bed. I got him out and calmed him down, as he was shaking and terrified. I don't blame him for his behavior. I've seen a medicine man since then and have had my pets and my home blessed. After that, nothing seemingly interesting has happened and I've gone on with my life. Thank you Swamp Dweller for sharing my story. Howdy Swamp Dweller, my name is Colton. I've just turned 19, I'm 6 foot tall, and a male. I've grown up around farms and hunting my entire life. I've encountered a handful of scary things, and some things that are just entirely unexplainable, so I thought I might share a handful of them here with you. I've had run-ins with spirits, demons, and even some creatures. I guess I've just gotten lucky. Anyway, I will talk much more about a more believable story today because it has to do with a much more understood animal. Boar hogs. Now, I've always been a little scared of them. They are little savages, sometimes not so little. Just something about a pig scream gets to me, not to mention that wild hogs can have a long tusk. So, they are formidable. Seeing the best way to deal with them one-on-one -on -one, is to either have a good gun or climb a tree and pray they leave. Anyway, I'll get on with my story. I'm from a little town in central Texas. I won't say the exact town, but it's between Austin, Texas and Temple, Texas. Over the past few years, hogs have been a nasty problem. They tear up the land and are downright dangerous. This story takes place in 2020 after COVID had begun. The whole incident happened very fast. It was trash day and my driveway is more of a dirt road that stretches about a tenth of a mile than an actual driveway. Also, my house is out in the country rather in the middle of nowhere, and homes are very few and far between. If you were looking at my house from the driveway, on the same side of the road on both sides of my house, with about a quarter mile in between, was my grandparents' house and neighbor's house. Other than those two, it was nothing for at least a couple of miles, depending on where you were headed. It was time to go, so I had to drag the trash can to the end and walk back. It's not a huge chore, but I had to do it. I didn't mind, though, because it let me enjoy a little time with myself and my dog, Mei Mei. Mei Mei is a sweet little blue lacy with enchanting eyes, and she's super intelligent and protective of my family and myself, and even protects our other dogs if she feels the need. If she was alpha female, then I was alpha male to the dogs, and they showed us both respect, and we showed each other respect. She would often walk with me when I took out the trash, which made this day odd. This day, I had forgotten to take the garbage out until it had gotten late, so it was already dark. I started walking when I realized Mei Mei wasn't with me. She was still watching me on the porch. I called her, but she just wagged her tail and whined as if to say, 
Bad idea, don't leave, stay with me, come here, or come see me. I usually would go back and check on her, but I figured I would just be going to the end of the driveway and back, and I'd be okay. This did put a little worry in me though. I'm not easily scared. I was spooked by Mei Mei, my seemingly fearless pup who's outsmarted and tangoed with strays and wild dogs and hogs, not wanting to budge. Halfway down the driveway, I smelled an awful stench that I could only describe as roadkill amplified by two. At this point, I realized Mei Mei stayed back because she didn't think it was safe for her or me. I stopped dead in my tracks and listened, but it was windy that night so I could hardly hear anything. I decided after standing and trying to listen for a bit longer to brave the walk and finish my task. Then I'd hightail it back home as fast as I could. Keep in mind that I'm pulling a decent sized trash can and it's not exactly quiet, so my position is undeniable, even with the wind. I expected something to happen honestly. I had adrenaline running the entire time I walked. I made it to the end of the driveway, parked at the trash can where it could be retrieved, and turned around to return the way I came. Now I'm walking back home and I can see the porch lights brightening my front yard, so I can easily see where to go. I took a deep breath and sighed with relief. Okay. Just gotta walk home. I'm practically home free. I was cut off mid-thought when suddenly, I felt even more uneasy than before, and I began to shake with adrenaline. The smell was more vital than ever, and I would have puked if my stomach had been weak. I heard a low, strained grunt followed by another and another. There was no mistaking that sound. They were pigs. As soon as I heard this, a switch flipped in my head. Run. Freaking run. I thought. I knew these pigs could run and outrun me if they really wanted to, but if I hurried, I felt that I could at least get to my dad's truck in the driveway and jump in to avoid them. If they were close enough, I wouldn't make it. I bolted. I'm not a typical fast guy, and I tried to take it slow and easy, but my legs sprouted wings because I was flying back home, scared out of my mind, and I could hear the grunting getting louder and louder. Suddenly, I heard a sound that made my heart sink. When hogs sprint, they make a sound that sounds like a mix of grunting, coughing, and growling. I knew it meant that they knew where I was and they were headed right for me. They could probably see me and they were coming to get my ass. I began running faster, as fast as my legs would carry me. I started thinking, trying to figure out what to do, and then it hit me. Mei Mei, help! God, I love that dog. As soon as she heard me, she barked loudly and started running for me. She was coming to get me, or at least help make a distraction. She was fast, and I knew she could efficiently run those pigs if needed, so I didn't worry about her getting away. She came and started yipping at me as if to say hurry the hell up. I was now going as fast as I have ever gone in my life with Mei Mei at my side. I made it, got to the porch, and spun around. I knew if those hogs were there, I wanted to see them because I wasn't going to leave Mei Mei alone with them now, and then I realized... The screams were gone. I didn't see or hear the pigs anymore, but I could still smell them. I went inside and grabbed the first gun I could reach, which was a 12 gauge shotgun and a box of shells for it. I ran outside and sat with my good girl for a few minutes. The smell eventually went away and they left. I believe the scent of a canine combined with me coming into the light of my house was enough to make them decide against chasing me any further, because I don't think I would have made it home otherwise, but it was definitely scary. I petted up that dog, and I still love her today. She's older now and has retired from being an adventure dog, but she's still my doggo, and I still take great care of her. About a week later, my dad and I went driving, and we slowed down and said, Hey, look, hogs. I looked up to see a group of hogs, at least 30 of them, anywhere between 200 and 500 pounds. They were huge. There is no doubt in my mind that this was the group that I had run into. This was about one mile from my house. I still see signs that they are around us, but I don't go out at night anymore. I take care of everything I need in the daylight. One night when I lived in a car with my husband and two dogs, some strange things happened to my husband and me. It had been at least eight days since I had slept very well so I was damn tired and cranky. As I lay down in the makeshift bed in the back of the car that night, I immediately started falling asleep. 
Since it was almost midnight, it was quiet at the Vista Point by then. Just as I was barely starting to dream, an urgent shaking on my shoulder woke me up. Loudly, I startled awake and demanded, What? However, I opened my eyes and quickly realized that our car was illuminated by a very bright light. Since it was a very famous spot, Vista Point, seeing other vehicles and people pulled over beside you wasn't unusual. Plus it was dark, so the light was necessary. By then I heard this strange male voice yelling, Sorry, I, I thought y'all maybe needed some light since your car was so dark over there, is all. My husband immediately responded, No thanks man, we're going to sleep, that's why we have it so dark over here. For a few seconds I heard only silence until the stranger answered, Well, what if I needed more light or something? An odd thing of him to ask, seeing as how he was the only one with the bright light, which was pointing at our car and not his. So I spoke up, finally replying with, we don't have any good lights. The stranger replied, Oh. So once again, I rolled my eyes hard that time, putting my headphones back into my ear, and I moved around again to try to sleep. I noticed the bright light the guy had on our car quickly turned off, and then I heard his vehicle start up and pull out of there. So naturally, I started to drift off to dreamland once again. To my dismay, not even 20 minutes later, I got another, more frantic feeling of shaking on my shoulder. That time though, I was pretty pissed off, so I sat up, glared at my husband and angrily hissed out, what? Through clenched teeth. They're back, and they're walking around out there, he said with panic creeping into his tone. So I again pulled the headphones out of my ears and listened for a second. I heard footfalls on the blacktop as I kept listening though I noticed the footsteps sounded like they were headed to one of the two RVs, also parked there for the night. The two RV vehicles were parked directly across the circle of Vista Point from us. Seriously pissed off at that point, I hissed at my husband. I'm pretty sure that's just someone going back to one of the RVs. I guess now would be the time to alliterate the layout of said Vista Point. It's a large cul-de-sac that overlooks a sizable, artificial reservoir. It's the sixth largest in my state. It also happens to be the location of where the Carrie Stainer murders, aka the Yosemite serial killer, roamed. Anyways, people often trek across the large cul-de-sac to use the bathroom. On the freaking reel though, yet again not even 10 minutes later, another freaking shaking on my shoulder. I just sat up and yelled loudly, what the hell now? My husband began to whisper to me in a panic. Another car just pulled up and when it did, two guys came out of the RVs and met up with the dude in the car. I tried to cut in angrily, but my husband interrupted with, they were talking, and all three looked over towards our car. Then they started walking towards us with their flashlights on, but they turned them off when they noticed that I was awake when they were halfway to our car. Since I still had one of my headphones in, I didn't quite catch all of what he said at the time. So now I should also tell you that I'm the kind of person who, when woken up, gets really pissed. So... I lost my cool on my poor husband, and I started yelling at him. My husband responded by hissing at me to either get up front so we could start loading up the car, or stay where I was in the back and he would pretty much pile things on top of me. I yelled some more, but I did eventually get up front. Thankfully, we got out of there safely. On our way out, my husband told me that the first dude with the bright light on their car had a huge hunting knife strapped to his waist. My husband also said to me when I started yelling after being startled awake several times, all three guys turned around and slowly dispersed. We'll never know if the incidents were related, but that's one hell of a coincidence that those three guys were coming at our car less than 20 minutes later, don't you think? Thanks for listening to these creepy and allegedly true middle of nowhere horror stories sent in by viewers just like you. As always, if you enjoyed these stories, please be sure to hit that like button. The more likes this episode gets, the more YouTube promotes it, and that's incredibly helpful to the swamp growing. If you're listening to this on Apple Podcast or Spotify, please be sure to give us a five star rating over there as it helps us grow on those platforms. It's incredibly appreciated. Have you ever experienced something creepy or unexplainable? Well, I would love to see your story. Be sure to submit your story at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I would love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp. 
It's stories like yours that truly help keep this show going on a daily basis. Whether it's from the middle of nowhere or something completely different, be sure to send it on in. If you're on the go but don't have YouTube Premium but still want to download and listen to your favorite Swamp Dweller scary stories no matter where you are, you can download them absolutely free from Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, iHeartRadio, and just about anywhere else you find your favorite podcast online. If you would like to support the Swamp outside of that, maybe check out the merch store. I've got t-shirts, hoodies, and more. I'd love to see you guys wearing some cool Swamp threads. If you want to see more Swamp content on the weekly, be sure to check out my second channel. You can also find me over on Twitch. There's a link in the description. I play horror games and do all kinds of cool stuff there multiple times a week. Be sure to join us over on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter to not miss any behind the scenes and or updates that you might not see on YouTube. Much love and appreciation to HelloFresh for once again sponsoring the channel. If you want to get 16 free meals, be sure to check out HelloFresh.com slash Swamped16 and use code Swamped16 to get 16 free meals and 3 free gifts. Be sure to tell me what story was your favorite in the comments down below, and I will see you all soon with another creepy episode.